What's up YouTube? In today's video, I'm going to be going over how to communicate between two Tulip apps instantaneously. So here we see an example where we have a production terminal with some generic OEE visibility graphs. And you'll notice in the top right corner, we have a messenger option. So if I switch over to this messaging area, I see some historical messages. But most importantly, when I send a new message that might look something like this, I want this submit to obviously make that message available for other tulip apps but also send a notification to them so you'll notice when i hit submit you're going to hear a sound and over here on this window i have a hypothetical second machine running the same app and you'll notice that instantaneously the message icon is yellow and a sound was played so this terminal gets the message quite literally that there's a new message for them. This is Daniel Pomerantz with Low Code Operational Intelligence, and this is gonna be an advanced Tulip tutorial. So I'm gonna skip over some of the infrastructure that's gone into getting us this far, but if you're curious about how I got messages to send instantaneously, this is a great trick to have in your pocket. All right, so you should be at a point where you can build a page like this into your app. So I added a button on my base layout that allows you to access a page that looks like this. If you're not comfortable with tables, variables, and some basic trigger logic, I did an overview of this setup in my LinkedIn content. So if you check out my LinkedIn page, or if you just go over to Tulip University, that'll be a much better place to get started. For this tutorial, let's assume you're capable of building a page like this. And where we're starting off is adding functionality really on this submit button that allows you to send a signal to one or many other Tulip stations. So if we edit the trigger on this submit button, somehow we need to add a ping to all of our other terminals. We want this to be scalable. What we're going to do is use Tulip machines to enable this functionality. So if you've never used Tulip machines, this is a great introductory foray. It's not a real machine, but the functionality allows us to build what we need. So if you go to Tulip Machines and create first a new machine type. So you'll go to Types, and you're just going to create a machine type, which is the overarching infrastructure for a machine. And let's call this the Inbox Hook. Okay, and so this way other Tulip interfaces will be able to connect into this hook and receive a message. So we're going to add in a machine attribute called message. And you'll see here that it's by default searching through all of your machine attributes. But at the bottom, you can hit this plus to create a new one called latest message. And we'll just use text. So let's create. And now we can click again to bring this message as an attribute on this machine type. What we're going to do next is create a machine of that machine type. So if we go to machines, you'll see right here on the screen, it's got a nice big plus. Let's create a machine in this inbox hook. And we can call this inbox hook machine, anything you'd like. You'll notice that Tulip's architecture for machines and machine types is really designed for many to one, right? If you go back, I have four ovens of the machine type one. In this case, it's just a one-to-one -one relationship. We won't need more than this single machine. So from this machine page, what we need to do is configure that latest message attribute. That's the only one we're gonna care about. And what we can do is click here and you'll see all of your available machine data sources. You might have more if your uh, company is using machines in Tulip, but by default, you will always have the Tulip API. So when I click this, it's going to introduce some JSON information, which is going to allow me to directly connect to this machine. And what we can do is hit this link on the right side and copy these attributes or this, this JSON bundle, which we are then going to use in a connector function. So this is all set up. We'll be able to use this in any Tulip app. But first, we need to actually send information to this machine. So if we go over to our connectors, again, 
This is something I'm not going to get too far into. If you are curious about how to set up a connector, specifically a connector to your Tulip Table API, there's a lot of great content. Basically, within a workspace or within an account, you can set up these API tokens that allow you to utilize the Tulip API. And there's lots of different functions that you don't have from regular Tulip. And so what we're doing, if we go back to the connectors page, is we're using our HTTP connection, which is already set up and verified. And we are going to create a function for Tulip to send information to Tulip. So we can create a connector function called the inbox ping or anything you'd prefer to call it. And if we reference the Tulip API documentation, we are going to be using this machine monitoring attributes report function. So I can see it's post attributes report. And so I need to change this connector to a post function. It's going to be using Tulip's V3 API, which is pretty much everything at this point. And attribute slash report. Cool. And what we're going to do as well is just add an input here to um, maybe we'll have the timestamp as our message. So let's get a date time. Let's set a default. What we're going to do next is reference these API docs for how to send a specific piece of information over this API call. So if I go back to my connector function, I'm going to use this example as my starting point, And I'm going to frame the data that I'm sending over this connector based on the example. Now, what we need to do next is fill in the information with what we want to send. So if we go back to our machine, here is this information, which we want to copy that contains the machine ID and the attribute ID. So let's paste that over. Much better. Format that. So these are connected to my specific machine and my specific attribute. And then for the value, we want to replace the text with the input that is going to eventually be coming from our Tulip app. So Anytime you're working with the raw text, you'll be able to wrap the exact name of your input in dollar signs. And now when I run this connector function, assuming I did everything correctly, I'll get a green message, meaning all good. And if I check this machine, I can see that that message that I just sent, again, it's kind of odd because we're using Tulip to write to Tulip but it enables some awesome functionality. So we can see that this connector function now allows us to take an input and write to this inbox hook machine. Awesome. So getting back to the application, you won't be surprised that the next step we're going to be doing is adding this connector function to our submit. So when I hit submit, I can add a new action and we are going to run connector function. We're going to use that connector that we already had created and then inbox ping is the new connector function. And let's send over the app info current date and time. Okay. And now just to make sure what we have is working, if we pull up the Tulip player and send a message, hello, is this updating the machine. We would expect that that just triggered an update right here, which it did with a much more specific time. We know now that our Tulip app is connected to the machine. And so the only thing left is to make sure that when that machine gets a new signal, the app is going to respond appropriately. And so what we can do in order to have Tulip apps respond to machine attribute changes is create triggers on usually the step. In this case, it's really nice to create your trigger on the base layout. 
So for reference, a trigger that's created on the base layout will actually run no matter what step you're on. And you'll see this is already a critical, useful thing in the uh, OEE application that I've built. But in our case, we want the message notification to occur no matter what screen you're on. And so what we can do is build a trigger on the base layout so that no matter what step the application is on, it's going to get this message. So we can say when a machine, and we're going to use a specific machine, the inbox hook machine, so that all apps are really thinking about this same machine or place, and when it outputs a latest message. So we want the app to do something when it gets a message. So we can now add data manipulation store. And here we're going to be storing a color value into the variable that is controlling the color of that new messages button. So uh, just to show this message icon right here, the font color is connected to a color variable in Tulip, which allows you to change dynamically how that appears. And then as well, we're going to play a sound. And so the doorbell sound works, just to prove the point. And so we're going to name this as well, something like that. So now we should have everything in place to send messages. Now, the one issue that we don't want, and I'll just demonstrate what we have forgotten, testing message now, is that I have two Tulip app opens on this machine, and we're actually going to see that new trigger logic apply to the one on the screen as well right? And we heard two doorbells. So if I'm working on this screen, I don't actually need this update. So the one final thing that we can do is add an extra piece of conditional logic here. So app info step name does not equal, and I'll use the name of this current step, messenger. We're also going to add a trigger update color so that when we come to this step, we're going to use the color white to reset that messenger icon. So let's set the color back to white when we get to the new step. And so now if we look back at our Tulip app, we go back. When we enter the messaging platform, it's going to get set back to white. And now we've done our testing. So now when I write a message after the two pieces of logic we've added, now only the other app should update. And so I'm going to kick this off and bounce over and we'll see this other app is going to get a sound and the color icon updates. And when they go to the page, they'll see the new message. So that's a wrap on this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all learned quite a bit, uh, lots of little tidbits along the way. Obviously there's ways to extend upon what we've built. Um, if you want a challenge, I would recommend trying to um, set up the notification system so that when you open an app, it can detect if there's a new message that appeared maybe while you were away. So you're gonna have to use a table to store the station's last activity, and you're going to have to cross-reference with the timestamp of the latest message. Um, really a great way to extend what we've built. Um, that's more you know, common tulip functionality that I think uh, would be a good exercise for you to figure out on your own. Um, but I really appreciate you all. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you're interested in more content like this, and I'll talk to you all later.